Okay, now let's talk about grouping. When you have a shape on the page, so here's an equation, and here is a bunch of picturey things. What you can do is you can select more than one shape. So I select the image. I'm holding the shift key and clicking. That makes a, a multiple selection. So now you can see that both of these have been selected. Now I want to group these so that it becomes one single shape. And we do control G. And you see now it becomes all one shape. When I move around, everything moves like this. They move together as a single object. When I resize them, they resize as a single object. Um, so control G is you select the shapes, multiple shapes. You hit control G and it groups them into one giant shape. Now, you may want to undo the group. So you select the group. Now you go control shift U, U for ungroup. And you see now they've become single elements again, single shapes, independent. Okay, so let's do that again. I'm going to group these. I'm going to, in fact, going to group all three together. So I select all three, control G to make them a giant group. And now they're all acting together. You see, resize, undo. <coughs> now, if you select the group, you can see the group has been selected. But the group contains three shapes. So if we want, we can kind of edit the group as well. So I'm going to select this is one of the shapes within the group. You can kind of see that we select that. And now I can move it around within the group. I hit Escape to undo my selections. And now you see I've edited the position of a single shape within the group. So grouping is Control G. Ungrouping is Control Shift U. It's an incredibly useful thing to do. Let me show you an example. So, for instance, Control Shift U. Okay, this little guy that I have here is in fact a group. You see, what I did, I'm going to go Control Shift U. What it actually contains is it contains lots of little text boxes that I went copy paste, copy paste, and some lines. And then they form a true table. I select all of them, Control G, and now they become a group. You follow? What a page contains is it contains essentially these things that are called shapes. So here's a thing called a shape. And you move shapes around. And here's a shape. And here's a shape. And there are all sorts of different types of fancy shapes. But let's just learn the basics, basics of shapes. So what it comes down to, the page is a collection of shapes. And the beautiful thing about Visio, this is the really nice thing that you don't get in other programs. If you look in here, look, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's a grid, okay? There's a grid that's happening here, and that grid you know. So, for instance, when it says four or five here, that's dimensions of inches, and it really is inches. It's what comes out on your page. So, here's a shape, and the nice thing is that as you move it, see, see, look at the boundaries. What this did is it locked exactly onto grid points. And so what happens is, like take this thing here. If I go zoom and zoom, right? This shape is now exactly one inch high and three inches uh, wide. So, and you can position it exactly where you want, and I don't know if you can, I shouldn't point at the screen. And this locked exactly onto that corner there. This is a very useful feature of Visio. You don't get that in most drawing programs, is this grid locking. Okay, so for shapes, what do we have? We have the basic kinds of shapes are like boxes where you enter text. So I put one here, this is a box, see look. Change the shape. And then you type your text like this. Ooh, here is some crazy explanation. You type, you 
do all the same things it do with Microsoft Word. So for instance, go boldface, change the color of the text, change the fonts. Everything's exactly the same, it's like you get in Microsoft Word. Okay, but the nice thing is you just move them around as you want them, and you position them as as required. Um, I'm just control zing out of here. Uh, now, so text boxes. Now, if you want to create, so I've made a text box for you here, and you can just edit it. But if you wanted to make one for yourself, what you would do is you would click on this tool here, it's called the text tool, and then you go boom, and it makes a text box ready for you to go, okay? When, so now right now, look, I'm going to hit escape, so now there's the shape, but at the moment, look at my pointer, the pointer has a text box selection tool, so if I do anything, I'm creating text boxes, right? And you don't want to, so once you've done that, you should always go back and choose this guy here, the pointer tool. The pointer tool means you're just doing selections. You're not actually creating anything. You're just making selections of, of shapes. So here we go. This is a shape. I made a text box. And here it goes, you know, top of the box, bottom of the box, center in the box, uh, right alignment, left alignment, center alignment. And this is called that stupid justification stuff. Anyway, so you align the text as you as you need it. Um, standard type of text is usually 12 point. And also use get into the habit of using Times New Roman. Because when you move files from one computer to another computer, there's no guarantee that that computer has the fonts that you actually use. So if you're using all sorts of fancy fonts, while it's true that they're installed on your computer, it's not necessarily true that they're on another computer. However, Times New Roman pretty much is on every computer. So when in doubt, always use Times New Roman. Uh, yeah, once again, you play around with how you want. You can go like underline, strike through, italic, like that. And then you can change the color. Let's go color red. <laughs> okay. Now, what? Look, I got the pointer tool. I select the shape, hit the delete key. Oh, it's gone. Okay, um, now, in our first assignment, first problem set, we also need to learn how to make equations. And I've already created a shape here that is an equation, so you can just edit it. But suppose we wanted to make it from scratch. Here's how we would do it. We go Insert, Object. Then you choose uh, Microsoft Equation here. That one you'll have. I actually have another equation editor called Math Type. I particularly like this one, but that one you have to buy. So chances are you already have Microsoft Equation. So let's do that one. Okay. So we do that. Now here's the equation editor. And you say uh, F equals, and then you um, start entering things. Let's say you've got an X thing. So I go. X. Now for superscripts and subscripts in this, you choose the tool here and you can see the little black things are where you put the box. So I'm going to do a subscript. It's called an X1. Now I move over here. I select the, oops, select the X and for like vector symbols and tildes and bars and stuff on top, you put them here. So here's a bar on top. Then for the Operators in between, we get them from here. Here's a big fat dot. I go backspace because I don't like it. It's too fat. Now I go a smaller one. Go, oh, yeah, I like that one. Now to save myself some time, I select all of this. Control C for copy. Move to the position we go. Go. Control V is paste. Paste, 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 paste. And then you just edit. Say, oh, this is number five. Uh, that one's number, whoops, number four, move to the position, look at the size of the cursor, see it's big, which means I'm not selecting the subscript, I go back one more time, now it becomes small, which means I'm selecting the little subscript thing, go three, move to the, this one, two, when you close the editor here, oh, I got a little dot there, I don't like that dot, 
when you close the editor here, notice it showed up on your drawing page here as an equation object, and you can just move it around as you want. You can resize it, you go, ooh, I want it skinny like that, I want it like this, and you go, wait a minute, let's make it huge. So, there we go. That's how you make equations. I'm going to go delete. Now what you will find is that throughout the semester you end up using the same kind of images, create, trying to create the same images over and over again, like for instance truth tables or these types of uh, diagrams here, like I don't know what you want to call these things. And so rather than creating them from scratch every single time, it's better if we just reuse them and just perform edits. Now I usually just go copy paste. I'll take this guy from like one assignment and then I'll just go control C copy, control paste like this, put it like there. Now I take that guy, ungroup and edit. Like for instance, let's say I wanted um, four inputs to this. What would I do? I would take that guy, I would say, ooh, let's select all those. Control copy, control paste, and go down there and move them like this. Uh, by the way, when you're doing edits, um, it's always best if you get the grid alignment first and then do the edits. So control Z, let me do that again. Control Z. So here I am, and it's much better if we first align to a grid point. There we go. So now all the text boxes are aligned on grid points. And then when you control copy, control paste, and you can see, oh, there. See now it's easy because they're all aligned nicely. Uh, I should zoom out, of course. Control copy, control paste. And you move them to the position where you want them to be. You say, ooh, that line needs to be be done better. So you move the line over like that. You move these guys down. And notice how easy it is to align them to the grid points. Once again, this is the true beauty of the Visio. Okay, there we go. Should have missed it. Uh, and then you just edit, you go, ooh, that one I want to be a one, that one I want to be a one, that one I want to be a one. Get the, get the idea? So, so one method is to just copy-paste shapes that already exist or groups that already exist and then just edit them. Another thing you can do is you can save um, the things that you've used commonly onto this thing here. This is called a stencil. So let's have a look at the stencil. Now I've provided for you here a stencil of shapes that I commonly use. I made all of these and I use them all the time. So you can also put the things you make on the stencil. So for instance, actually I think I've put a truth table here. I've got some truth tables already pre-made. You see, um, I've got my little happy faces, right? Once again, you can make them long faces. You see, oh, that's not square. So you align to a grid point. You make it so that these are exactly one inch square. You see? Um, right, anyway, so now let's say, let me take that face. Okay, now this is a group, so I'm going to go you select the group, control shift U for ungroup, and it says, ooh, this came from a master, do you want to do it? I say, okie dokie. Now my shape here contains circle, 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 and some kind of line, and let me edit that line, let me make it a different line, a free form. Okay, 
escape to get rid of all your selections, go back to the point tool. So here I have an object. I select all the pieces of the object, control G to group it into one thing. So now I've got a new group, a new shape. I just drag it over to here, to the, to the stencil. And it says, right now my stencil is read-only because I, so I'm editing the stencil. So I say, yeah, go ahead, edit the stencil. And now it sits there on the stencil. Now, once you've done that, you can use it anytime you want. You go, ooh, I'll have one of those faces. I'll have another face. I'll have another face. Get the idea? Delete, delete, delete. So these are stencils. Now, I provided a stencil called Digital Logic dot. VSSX. Um, I believe Visio likes you to put your stencils. When you go stencil or you right click, no, what do I do? Right click, yeah. No, how the hell do I get my stencils up? Oh, more shapes. Here we go. So if you go open stencils, uh, it looks in my documents, my shapes. That's where it finds it. So the stencil that I gave you, this one here, go and put it in My Documents, My Shapes. This should have been created when you installed Visio. And then, because it's in that location, whenever you go Stencils, well, actually, if you just, just go More Shapes, it'll show up on this list right here. Okay? So, I gave you a stencil. You go, you're free to edit it and do as you wish. Here's a thing for drawing state diagrams that I made that you can edit. Yeah. Anyway, the point is you can make your own shapes that you commonly use. Just store them on the stencil if you want.